संकरो नरकाय कुलघ्ना कुलस्त पतंति पितरो लुप्तपिंडोदक In this particular section of the Bhagavad Gita, which is almost toward the last part of the first chapter, the first chapter has forty-six texts, and we are in the forty-first. So overall, Arjuna from the twenty-seventh text onwards is giving his reasons for not fighting. now some of those reasons we can relate with immediately and some of those reasons they are coming from a particular world view that he was inhabiting at that particular time so till now basically it is in this part he is saying that we are not just two individuals fighting against each other we are a part of a large community that is a part of a tradition and in one sense you could say they are not just two communities rather it like yes they are two communities but they are two or both are parts of one larger tradition the same kuru dynasty there one dynasty which has its own traditions and he's saying that if we fight it's not just two of us fighting against each other it's two traditions fighting against each other and what is going to happen is it's not just either one of us will be destroyed it is more that the entire tradition could get destroyed once the humanity will go on but the future generations they'll have a very dark future and within that particular world view it's implicit that this life is not the only life that we live this is there's this life and after that we either go to the higher level of existence or a lower level of existence so the idea is that after we end this life where we go it depends not just on our karma so somebody can go higher but the kind of legacy that we have created in the world over here hmm so our legacy our descendants their actions also shape our destination and as we're saying that even if we are acting virtuously even if somebody thinks that okay i fought this war for a virtuous purpose but still in future generations we will be have we will have created a legacy of chaos a legacy of disorder and thus we whoever even if they have ascended to higher level they will fall down to a hellish level so if the legacy is virtuous then they perform certain they do they live in a virtuous way they perform some practices for not only for their own well being but for the well being of their ancestors also so without getting into technicalities of all this this particular world view the key point is that arjuna is thinking long term arjun is that it's is thinking not just i don't want to fight because it doesn't feel good to me he's saying that i don't want to fight because the consequences are catastrophic now, in many ways arjuna is far sighted but what krishna will later say is that he is not far sighted enough mm-hmm. that far sighted can also be much bigger zooming outwards that says first reason is that you know, they are my relatives how can i kill them no then he says that after that he says that okay uh, what's the point of you might get a kingdom but kingdoms are worthless without relatives hmm without if it comes at, not just without them at worthless yeah worthless if prizes death of relatives 
then he goes on and says but what if they are aggressors well they may be aggressors but still they are my relatives they are aggressors they are motivated by greed why should i be motivated by greed i am not so i should stoop to their level then he's going further and then he's saying that and it's not just my motivation but i'm thinking about society in future so in one sense society in future that society will be degraded there are no protectors of, for society the vulnerable sections will be exploited and then in one sense this is also at the same level there is a slight differences this is this is one's future life not just my own but in general our society's future life that's what he's talking about over here in this way he is actually zooming out now if we go to the next verse he stays after this doshere tair kula gnanam varna sankar kar kai utsadyante jati dharma kula dharma dharmascha shashvatah he's now again coming back to this plane and he's talking about how the leaders of society the protectors of society are destroyed then everything falls apart eventually sometimes we think of society one of the common illusions in human society is that the way the world is today if the world is like this today tomorrow is just going to be an extension of today but there's no guarantee of that that when it is tomorrow going to be an extension of today could be could not be uh, it could be very different if somehow the order maintenance of society are destroyed or they get misled or whatever happens today might be here but tomorrow might be a, in a very dark direction so he's he's talking in terms of that long term future and saying no i see tomorrow to be very dark and the system that a protected society will all be going away and in one sense you could say that arjuna is here approaching this war not just from the perspective of the present we consider that the past this is the present there is the past and there is a future so arjuna is thinking it not just in terms of the present or the immediate context around the present he's seeing it in the bigger past and the bigger future the distant past also and the distant future also so the sanskrit word if you look at jati dharma and kula dharma so so that's it's we humans are embedded in many social structures in the society that arjuna was a part of you know jati is more like sorry kula is more like genealogical genealogical group that's called as kula now so arjuna is saying that i am a part of a dynasty and there are dynastic duties which keep society functioning and beyond that is also talking about jati dharma no jati is similar to varna which is more like a occupational duty it's a more like a occupational group so when you talk about the occupational group it's bigger so if you see in human history sometimes people who are of similar professions group together the people who are goldsmiths now they all have their own own society so like that he's saying that this is not just a fight between that will destroy our dynasty just true but he's saying as a part of our dynasty there are kshatriyas there are warriors from various other dynasties who have come here 
and because of that the warrior class itself will end up destroyed and that's why he says kula dharma and jati dharma so both will be destroyed so you could say family is kula is more a family and jati is more referring to community so you could say that one family is doing the say the business of weaving and somehow if they are destroyed okay that's bad but if the entire weaver community is destroyed then that's going to be a significantly more problem and if is and the entire society is bereft of the community of protectors then there'll be chaos in society so when he's using the word traditions it's uh, it's not just some a sentimental thing from the past that we have to keep doing it's, see traditions actually give us a sense of identity if we have the american independence day or the indian independence day there's certain things done at that time and those are a link with our past and that's you could say is symbolic but it's more than symbolic we have birthday celebrations we have certain activities which steal our link with where we come from and then they also remind us okay this is what i am expected to do this is how i am meant to function in life this is how i should be responsible so when that when we are not grounded in in our past in the history from where we came from then we can become swept away by any and every wave that comes our way so what he's talking about here is that the things which ground society the the dynastic duties and the broader occupation duties ja kula dharma and jati dharma both will be destroyed and thus there is similarity but it's a broader grouping over there these are this kind of catastrophes or disasters unfortunately they are they're scarily repetitive throughout human history and we are being uprooted from our moorings as people have trans people are transmigrated for education for business for political refuge for whatever reasons so yes i would say that it may not be only because of war but yes there is a significant loss of grounding from material perspective and there's definitely loss of grounding from spiritual perspective that's why so many people feel lost nowadays and that's why this even if we can't be very strongly materially grounded in the past at least when we talk about our roots there's hope people have the idea discover your roots so we could discover our roots historically we could discover our roots culturally we could discover our roots geographically we discover our roots genetically and all these are important but ultimately these are material from the material perspective but beyond these we have our roots spiritually who we are at our core where have we come from and what does it imply for our destiny so the gita will go towards this focusing on the spiritual grounding of our identity and that how at the material level things may change but at the spiritual level they can be kept unchanging so we'll discuss this in the next chapter उत्सन्न कुल धर्मा मनुष्यादर नरके नियतम वासो भवतीशुष्क्रम सोकिंग हियर दट दिस इज नॉट जस्ट मै आइडिया मै फियर्स मै एप्रिहेंशन सिंग दिस इज समथिंग विच इज टाइम ऑनर्ड विजडम आई हेव हर्ड इट फ्रॉम wise people in the past that if we cause destruction of society then we will have to pay the price even if we are no longer here the price has to be paid so there is a world view which goes beyond our present life and that world view will be explored later prajna is a part of that society where he is looking at the future consequences and in the next verse he will talk about what is his decision thereafter so we'll continue that in the next session I think we discussed two main points today. One was that how when Arjuna is talking about when the society is filled with people who are 
as is an unwanted progeny then that leads to social devastation and so he is we talk about his far sighted his reasons are zooming outward and outward and outward he's thinking from a bigger broader perspective that is good and we'll see how krishna will take his vision further than that also and next one we discussed about how you know, he is talking from the perspective of the broader destruction of society it's in terms of the family the dynasty and in terms of the occupational community both so he is uh, overall considering that the consequences of the action are going to echo not just from this present moment and around it to a small distance but they're going to echo over a large large distance and thus he he feels that maybe that this fight shouldn't be there that i shouldn't be fighting this war okay thank you